This ship here has a capacity for 1300 passengers and 800 crew. By modern standards, it's a small ship. The largest ones are pushing up to 9,000 people now, so we'd be talking about a population the size of Glastonbury. Now, all those people have to actually live on the ship in nice conditions. Let's face it, if it wasn't nice, it wouldn't be possible for the cruise lines to actually sell any cabins. They expect to be clean, to be able to wash their clothes, and it goes without saying they expect the basics like showers and toilets. All these facilities use water. It may not seem much individually, but it soon adds up. If I tell you that the average person will use 40 to 50 gallons of water per day, you can start to see the issue. Even on this small ship, you'd be looking at 100,000 gallons of water every day. That's pushing 500 tonnes of water. If you look at the classic Southampton New York run of about six days, even a small ship will have produced almost 3,000 tonnes of waste water. Now, contrary to popular belief, ships don't just empty this water into the sea. There's this little convention from the IMO that's called MARPOL, which deals with marine pollution and restricts the discharges that ships are allowed to make. First off, we need to collect it all together, and that's easy enough. Across the bottom of the hull, there are loads of ballast tanks. Normally, you would fill them with seawater to add weight into the bottom of the ship, simply for stability reasons. More weight down low generally means a more stable ship. But actually, that weight doesn't need to be seawater. You can just as easily fill them with the wastewater that you produce on board. Saying that, you don't just pick a random tank and collect all the wastewater together. In much the same way as you separate paper and metals in household recycling, we separate wastewater on board. We actually use two categories, grey water and black water. The difference between the two is in the bacteria that's present in each. Black water, which is waste from mainly toilets, has come into contact with solid waste and contains far more harmful components. Grey water, on the other hand, is things like wastewater from showers and laundries. It's the sort of water that some environmentally friendly homes would collect and reuse. For example, when you're flushing toilets with old bath water and things like that. So, now you have a tank rapidly filling up with black water, or raw sewage as it's commonly known. What on earth can you actually do with it? On shore it all goes to sewage treatment plants, and actually on a ship the exact same thing happens, albeit on a slightly smaller scale. Down in the engine room you'll actually find a full-blown sewage treatment facility. Let's break it down and have a look at how it works. As sewage enters the system, it first passes through this filter. All this does is skim off anything particularly large. From there it passes into the next chamber, the aeration chamber. And this chamber is actually filled with aerobic bacteria. Aerobic just means the bacteria needs oxygen to be able to survive. If we were to just dump all the sewage in here, the bacteria would soon use up their oxygen, so we actually use air blowers to give them a constant supply. With oxygen and the sewage as a food source, the bacteria are set to work. All this is, is it's just an accelerated form of decomposition. Remember, these bacteria are all alive. This is why ships are so careful with the chemicals they use in their toilets. The last thing they want is to go and kill all these helpful bacteria by accident. So, now our little friends have digested all the sewage, it's on to the next stage. And this is the settlement chamber. It's a bit like a cocktail that you've left out for too long. You know where it separates out into layers. In our case, the dense, heavy material sinks to the bottom, and the water floats to the top. It's easy enough to deal with the dense stuff. You can actually just send it back to the beginning, and you kind of keep cycling it through the bacteria until they've eaten through all they can. Saying that, at some point it will become so dense that it gets caught in the filters, and then it can be removed and either sent for incineration or landed ashore. The fluid stuff at the top, which by this stage is practically just water, then gets cycled into the final treatment chamber, and this final treatment is just sterilization. It could be chlorination, like we use in a swimming pool, or it could be another high-tech method, like UV treatment. Basically, we're just making sure that the last of the harmful bacteria is gone. Finally, we're left with a result that's water that's perfectly safe. It's actually safer than some drinking water. Of course, on ships, we don't send it for drinking. We actually just send it to another storage tank, where it can wait until the ship is in a geographical area where it's allowed to discharge. So, that's the black water. But what about the grey water? Well, that doesn't actually need to pass through the sewage treatment plant at all. Some plants do add grey water and process it along with the black, but not all by any means. One issue in particular is that it's far harder to control the chemicals that people use in showers and sinks. You wouldn't want your shampoo killing off all the little workers down in the treatment plant. As far as I'm aware, 
there's no requirement to treat grey water at all because it doesn't contain those harmful bacteria that are found in raw sewage. Of course, simple filtration is used to remove anything large that shouldn't be in there. But even so, treatment of grey water is usually minimal. Most ships will simply discharge it when they're far enough away from land. Saying that, there are a growing number of geographical areas that do now prohibit or at least limit grey water discharge. One particular area of note is Alaska, where there have been a few high profile prosecutions for breaching their limits. I always find it fascinating that when wastewater finally comes to be discharged, what started out as the most harmful, black water, actually enters the sea as the cleanest, practically fresh water. So next time you take a cruise, spare a thought for all those little bacteria working away in the bowels of the ship, digesting everything you send them. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's topic, for more like this every other Friday, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, thank you for watching, and goodbye.